All right, so new question, but same practice. We'll begin by reading the question sentence, and it says, how many full laps is that? Okay, well, how many full laps is what? So I might have to do a little more reading here, but here it says again, how many full laps? All right, let me just highlight that. How many full laps? I'm gonna just underline that as well, just in case that you know comes into play. So here it says a rectangular path is 60 feet by 45 feet. A runner covers a total of 2,100 feet along the edge. Everybody, quick question, just one quick question that I want you to answer here. When we think about a distance along the edge, along the edge, especially talking about a rectangle, when we're talking about a distance along the edge, we are discussing what? Distance along the edge, that is, that's perimeter, all the way, all the way. So when we think about this problem, this is how we want to think about it. It says, how many full laps is that going to be? So if we knew how long one lap was, we could divide this total of 2,100 feet, and we can divide it by whatever the perimeter is. Because when we divide it, that'll tell us how many full laps we can get. So step one is gonna to be to find the perimeter. Step two is gonna take the 2100 that we had and divide it by that perimeter because we'll see how many times the perimeter fits in and that'll let us know how many laps we can achieve. So here, perimeter equals double the length plus double the width. When we incorporate the length, that'll be double 60. And then when we incorporate that width, we have double 45. When we calculate here, if we double 60, we get 120. If we double 45, we get 90. Add those together, and we end up getting 210 feet. So there we are. We have the 210 feet, and what we said is, hey, that 2100 total feet, we'll divide that by the perimeter, which is 210. So with that, here we go. We have 2,100 2, divided by 210, and that will give us 10. 10 laps is what we can achieve here, my friends, and that's why the correct answer here is answer choice A. And there we go. Let's try this problem out here. And the question sentence, as always, is what we're gonna dive into first. So here it says, what is the third afternoon's temperature? Okay, sounds good. So specifically, everybody, we want the temperature for the third afternoon. So when we take a look at the information that we're given, we see that we're discussing a period of three afternoons, and it says that the mean temperature was 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to write that down. The mean that I'm given 71 degrees Fahrenheit, so right over there. And then I also see that for the mean, we have three values, three afternoons. And so I'll have one, two, and three. And I see that the two afternoons that I'm given are 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're looking for that final temperature. And the way that we can do that is, well, we can try to calculate the mean with the missing number as one of the answer choices, plugging and chugging, but that's gonna take a while, that's gonna take a long time, unless the answer is A, cough, cough, um, or we could work backwards faithfully to make life easy. So here's working backwards. We're gonna use our formula. Mean equals our total divided by the number of numbers. And let's fill everything in. The mean, we're given that, that's gonna be 71. And the number of numbers that we're given, that's gonna be three. One, two, three afternoons. So with that, boom, right there. So now that we're here, everybody, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get that total by itself. Because guess where we're gonna find this missing number? In the total. Can you guys tell me real quick, you know, whether you're watching this as a recording or watching me here live, can you tell me, yeah, to get the total, we're going to add 68, 74, 
and that missing number, that's what that total is going to be. Yeah, and we can even get rid of the three first as well. We can even get rid of the three first as well if we wanted to. So let me go ahead and show you how we get rid of that three. Everybody, if we're sitting here dividing by three right there, I can get rid of that division of three by just multiplying by three. And I do that to both sides though. So multiply by three on the right side and on the left side. And so that'll cancel out nice and easy. And we just have to consider what three times 71 is going to be. With a little bit of mental math, we can look at that, like you guys are saying there in the chat box, 213, we can say, hey, look, 71. 70 times three is 210. One times three is three. So 210 plus three is 213. We can obviously go ahead and do 71 times three if we wanted to, but again, we'll get 213. And 213 is gonna be our total. So from here, my party people, from here, we can now replace the total with what it actually is supposed to calculate. 68 plus 74 plus the missing number. Check it out here. We're gonna have the missing number plus 68 plus 74. Help me out, my party people. What is 68 plus 74 going to be? One hundred and forty two. Absolutely. So we have two hundred and thirteen equals X plus one hundred and forty two. Now, the last step that we'll take to get the final answer is just solving this equation. We'll subtract both sides by one hundred and forty two and we are good. So boom right there cancels out on the right side and we have seventy one. Equals x and that's why the correct answer here is going to be answer choice c and just before we go to the next problem just remember that this is a balancing act the mean that we were given was already perfectly balanced between the first two numbers it's three away from 68 and three below 74 and so we were already balanced if we add another number in there, a third number to stay the mean, to keep the mean at 71, that number has to be 71 in this particular case. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm really looking forward to seeing you try out the next one. And let's handle this next one here. So for this next one, we see that we're trying to evaluate this expression saying negative in front of the parentheses of m minus two, all to the power of three, and then plus five. So there's a lot going on. So the first thing I'll focus on is just getting the M in the right place, which is four. So we have negative parentheses M, which is four minus two all cubed and then plus five. So first step I'll do is I will take care of that parentheses, which is four minus two. So that ends up becoming two. And now we're gonna take two to the power of three. So remember everyone, when we take anything to any power, this is the number that's being multiplied, and this is how many times you're writing that number. So this will be two multiplied by itself three total times, which ends up becoming eight because two times two is four, and four times two is eight. So there we go. We have negative, again, this negative does not get multiplied yet. It's not a negative two, it's two cubed, and then the result is negative. Very different things, right? And then we have negative eight plus five, and here we are done because negative eight plus five ends up becoming negative three because when you have a negative and a positive added together, you just subtract keeping the sign of the bigger number. Eight and five have a difference of three with the eight being the bigger number, so we'll keep it as a negative. And there we go. The correct answer here is C, negative three.